What is something that was once considered to be a legend or myth that eventually turned out to be true? It was widely regarded to be a myth that the first emperor of a united China, Qin Shi Huang, built a massive replica of his empire as his mausoleum. The stories said he had thousands of statues of soldiers constructed to guard his temple in the afterlife and had an underground palace with rivers of mercury. In 1974, more than 8,000 terracotta warriors were uncovered in Xi'an, China gorillas, giant squid. Before they were documented, they only existed in stories for a long time. Imagine finding a giant squid getting washed up on shore before anyone knew what they were. Had to be so terrifying. The people that saw them went on to tell others who replied, psh, okay. And eons later, Jules Verne wrote 20,000 Leagues with the monster that had evolved from that one guy that saw a real one on the beach and his peen friends who didn't believe him. Well, not quite a perfect fit, but the one that always sticks in my mind was that the Mongolians would always boil their water before drinking to get rid of the tiny evil spirits. That's a pretty good description of germs and bacteria for the time period. Sounds like something a time traveler would have to say to convince the ancient Mongolians to boil their damn water. The ancient Greeks knew about atoms. Of course, they couldn't prove it, but they arrived at the conclusion that atoms have to exist. They thought about something decaying. Eventually, something will rot and rot until there's nothing visible left. If everything that decays truly disappeared entirely, then the world would have less matter in it as time went on. Eventually, all the matter would disappear. So they figured that there must be some tiny, tiny bits of matter that never go away and just get recycled. You'd be amazed at what people can figure out without modern technology. The Black Swan it used to be used as a phrase to mean something that was impossible to exist, or an affront to nature. Then they sailed into the Swan River in Western Australia, and lo and behold, there they were. There's an old saying of, when a mule foals, which was a Roman equivalent of when pigs fly. Mules can foal, it's just super rare. I believe there exists an oral history of a tremendous wave striking the Pacific Northwest among various coastal tribes. It was broadly viewed as being nonsense before they uncovered evidence of a colossal thrust earthquake and tsunami from around 1700. Giant redwood trees were thought to be a hoax by a great many people back in the day. Gorillas were believed to be mythical, kind of like Bigfoot. I seem to recall that there was a while that the Greeks considered them to be an advanced civilization that spoke and had buildings. For a few hundred years, the Micronesians, a Stone Age culture, had the fastest sailboats in the world. The first few reports of how fast the boats went were derided as fantasy. It wasn't until George Anson made actual measurements and drawings in the 1740s it was taken seriously. The City of Troy Kangaroos were once classified as cryptids, along with Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, etc. Before it was established that they kept their babies in their pouches, it was told that they were creatures with two heads. Makes me think what other cryptids were actually just being seen wrong. That one scene from the newlywed game where the question was, ladies, where's the weirdest place you've ever gotten the urge to make whoopee? To which one of the contestants replied, in the butt. The host, Bob Eubanks, even insisted for years that it never happened. But then a clip emerged. One of my favorites is Lake Nyos in the Republic of Cameroon. The local legend was that an evil spirit or monster lived in the lake and would come out at night to kill anyone who lived too close to the lake. One of the local groups, the Bathmen, settled in the high ground near the lake due to the legends. Different groups moved into the area in the mid-1900s and lived closer to the water's edge, disregarding the customs of the bathmen. In 1986, nearly 1,500 people living near the lake were found dead. Those who lived in the higher ground were fine. It turns out the lake was very deep and would essentially become carbonated. A landslide could trigger a release of CO2 from the lake waters. On that night in 1986, an enormous release occurred, and since CO2 is heavier than air, anyone in the lower areas simply suffocated and didn't wake up. So while the myth about the evil spirits wasn't entirely true, there really was something in the lake to fear. I read the wiki article on the disaster. Apparently, the massive release of CO2 caused the normally blue waters of the lake to turn red. If that isn't a detail straight out of a horror movie. Rob Ford, Toronto Mayor, Smoking Crack when this rumor broke, most people just thought it was a dumb rumor. 
Given his character, it seems like the kind of thing somebody would invent or overzealously stretch evidence to attempt to make it real. Even people that didn't like him, many people didn't give this any credit. Then the video surfaced and the admissions came and it was surreal. Did he die? Not from crack, but yes, he did die. Some sort of cancer got him. The Club Penguin Iceberg actually tipped. For a long time, it wasn't possible, though. They just decided to make it tip before they closed everything down. Actually, it happened twice. Once way in the beginning, which is where the legend came from, and a second time as a farewell to the game last year. Source, my older brother witnessed it and I was cool by association. I feel like dragons were born out of early human civilizations finding dinosaur bones. And in that respect, dragons did exist. Cyclops were made up after seeing a skull of an elephant. Looked up a pic of elephant skulls, and that actually makes a lot of sense now. The Female Orgasm The Living Islands A group of sailors land and explore a new island, one they have never seen before in an area they know well. It is covered with ancient waterlogged trees and the corpses of unknown eldritch creatures. Spanning a hundred or so meters, the isle appeared to have risen overnight. During the night, they light a fire from driftwood. Moments later, the great beast upon whose back they now rested gives a great fiery roar and dives underneath the waves as they scurry back to their ship, which is nearly pulled down by the anchor. There are versions of this from the Mediterranean, the Western Indian Ocean, and the South China Sea. Despite the strange co-occurrence of the thousands of years old myth, Everyone thought this was completely baseless until an island rose from the depths outside of Pakistan a few years ago, floating on the cushion of methane. Some hapless locals go aboard, light a few of the vents, and lo and behold, the island roared fire until it sank a few days later. Sure, it's not alive by today's standards, but that seems like a fair guess by the ancient sailors who probably spent the rest of their lives trying to tell people. The Tranquil Lake The locals in a region of Africa repeatedly told European settlers that a particular lake was cursed. It had only been holy to some old tribe whose god got angry and slew them all. There was nothing strange about the lake itself except that it didn't contain the usual fish. Settlement and forced resettlement began shortly. Better part of a century later, the curse struck and the village was completely wiped out. The local populace, most of their cattle, and nearly all smaller life died. The deaths of every insect, bird, and beast of the jungle within miles made for the eerie silence which had given the lake its name in ages past. Hundreds had died. The survivors, shaken to their very core, whispered of demons and the stank of brimstone. The dead appeared to have died without wounds or signs of disease. Later, the local priest spoke of how the lake had turned blood red and remained so for weeks. Beyond religion, no one knew what had happened, and after a time, the rest of the world concluded the tall tales of the deadly red lake must have been bullcrap. That changed with the Nios disaster a century later. Basically, what happened with Lake Nios was that something disturbed a large pocket of lethal gas, CO2 I think, that had collected at the bottom of the lake and caused it to rise out of the lake and go through the town killing all those people. Panda Bears Nobody used to believe they existed because those who found them had to go so far to do so and weren't guaranteed a spotting. Pompeii was rediscovered by a Spanish engineer in 1748, some 1600 years after the volcano eruption destroyed it. Not quite a myth, but Jonathan Swift wrote in Gulliver's Travels, 1726, about Mars having two moons, about 150 years before they were discovered in 1877. He got their distances from Mars in orbital periods not ridiculously wrong, either. In the 1960s, there were rumors that the US government had been carrying out secret germ warfare tests on its own citizens. These rumors were strongly denied. Then, in the 1970s, when pressed by Senate hearings, the military admitted that between 1949 and 1969, such tests had taken place, most notably on the New York subway system. The Okapi was once thought to be a fake. Turns out it wasn't. Just like many other animals before the modern age, if you didn't have its hide or a live specimen to prove it, it was assumed fake. The Japanese Divine Wind Legend Said to have saved the Japanese from two Mongol invasions and ultimately play a major role in the fall of the Mongol Empire. Turns out it did happen, but the reason the Mongols' boats sank was because the Chinese shipbuilders intentionally built a fault into the ships that would cause them to sink once winds last sea conditions hit a specific level. The Mongols, who knew nothing about ships, were totally oblivious to the subtle built-in error, the divine mistake. I guess that explains why the History of Japan video I watched said the Mongols died because of a typhoon twice while trying to attack the Japanese.
ball lightning is pretty fascinating. There have been anecdotal reports of it for hundreds of years, but it was hard to document because it doesn't last long and it couldn't be photographed. It also is hard to create it in a lab, but it is acknowledged now that it does exist. I first read about it in one of the Little House on the Prairie books and I thought it was wild. I wasn't sure if it was real or some kind of hallucination. Saraswati River in India was considered a myth, a stuff of mythological texts and such. No one could actually confirm its existence, but there was a millennia-long speculation about why did the river feature so much in late Bronze Age Indian literature if it was not real, alongside actual and real major rivers. It was even deified as a goddess, a prospect reserved for major rivers. Yet no one had any idea about where it was until later on. Fast forward to the 19th century, Indians and the British surveying the land discovered an entire dry river valley in the middle of the desert, not far from the location mentioned in ancient texts. It roughly runs behind the modern India-Pakistan border. Many wondered where the lush and prosperous Saraswati flood plain mentioned in Vedic texts went, and why did the river dry up? The most common theory today is that the river, while real, suffered drastic effects in the massive climate change of the late 6th century AD and lost its course. The mention of it in imperial texts disappears by the next century. Parts of the river lingered around until the 9th century but increasing desertification eventually killed it completely, and the river passed from memory. It remains like that today, just a faintly recognizable river valley in the middle of the desert. Atoms were first thought of by the ancient Greek philosopher Democritus. He called the atoms atomos, which meant smallest part. It took over 2,000 years before he was proven right. During his time, people believed the four elements were still earth, wind, fire, and water. At that point though, the Greeks were just spitballing. They had guessed basically everything that might be possible. Somebody had to get it right at some point. Lucid dreaming. By now, science accepts it and have proved it. Still, there's ignorant people out there who would not only tell you it's BS, but claim you're lying for attention if you say that you've done it. What proof do they have? Their dad told them it's not true. The Dead Sea Scrolls From 1946 to 1956 and 2017, over a thousand were discovered hidden in caves and tunnels outside of Hellenistic Jerusalem. The scrolls are an important source of history, linguistics, and biblical significance as they contain writings from the 1st century AD making them some of the oldest written documents to be put in the Bible canon. The only known biblical text found to be older are the priestly blessings from the Book of Numbers, dated at 600 BC and excavated in Jerusalem, and a single piece of Leviticus, excavated at Ein Gedi, dated at the 1st century AD and the third oldest piece of the Torah. The scrolls are written in multiple languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, Arabic, Greek, and Latin. The Scientology Manual the Kraken was the legend of the sea monster that used to destroy ships off the coast of Norway. Nowadays, it is thought that maybe the giant squid or octopus was what was known to be the Kraken. Similarly, small miniature dragon resembling lizards have been found, and not only such creatures, but also the case of the Komodo dragon might account for Chinese mythological accounts of the dragon. On the Dreamland stage in Super Smash Bros. Melee, there was a legend that two King Dededes would sometimes be in the background at the same time. Eventually, more and more people started seeing the double Dedede, and there is video evidence of it now. The Coelacanth It's a type of fish that was thought to be extinct for over 100 million years, until it was found off of the coast of Madagascar in the 1930s by a fisherman. It's a pretty cool story. It really makes you question what's out there. Back in the day, there was an old Scottish superstition. Scotch brewers used to have these big copper stills, and once they got worn out, they'd be very dented and worn. When a new still was made, the dents from the old one were replicated, as it was believed that doing this preserved the flavor profile of the last still. This was later found out to be true, although I have no source for it. The city of Nineveh. It is mentioned in the Bible and literally nowhere else, so it was regarded as fictional or an alternative name for another city until they found the ruins of an old city complete with inscriptions that it was in fact Nineveh. Black Holes I remember when I was in elementary school, there was a book series of thin informational books about things like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, UFOs, and the like. Lumped in with those were black holes. Irish legends said that the original settlers came to the island directly from Spain. This was considered to be almost certainly a myth by most scholars, that the settlers were surely have come from Britain. DNA analysis shows that many modern Irish people are close genetic relatives to the people of northern Spain. Germ theory 
the man who conceived the idea was dismissed and treated like a lunatic. There are millions of tiny invisible creatures all over and inside us that makes us ill? Preposterous. There was some African tribe that observed Jewish tradition and claimed to have ancient Jewish ancestry. It was thought to be a myth, but I remember back in the 90s that they got a DNA test and they found non-African DNA. Later in the 2000s, they found specific traits that would point towards Middle Eastern or Jewish heritage. More recently, however, another study was done, and they said that while evidence points towards non-African ancestors, nothing specifically says they're actually mixed with ancient Jews. Great Britain In the Roman Empire, there were rumors of an island off the coast of France, so when Caesar finally traveled there, it was the myth becoming reality. The government listening to your phone calls, reading your emails, and tracking your location. Hello, NSA! Will o' the Wisp was thought to be superstition, but turned out to be the action of luminous bacteria on decomposition. Not too sure if this counts, just something that's really interesting along the ancient explorers theme. When Alexander the Great's army was campaigning through India, they were given this sweet fruit to eat, which made them all seriously and violently ill because their bodies weren't used to that type of food, usually eating a basic diet of bread, olives, and meat. This fruit was the mango. I just find it interesting how badly affected the army was by what is a common fruit now. That's globalization for ya. Mango skin contains a lower concentration of the same irritants found in poison ivy and poison oak. I wonder if Alexander's men were reacting to the peel and not the richness of the fruit. Rogue waves were once considered tall tales told by sailors and captains who were shamed if their ship was damaged or sunk by them. Now they are studied by scientists. Echelon, the conspiracy theory that the government was intercepting all communications and sifting through them for intelligence. The tinfoil hat crowd ended up being completely accurate on this one. The ore fish was thought to be legend before one washed up here in California. The city of Ur in the Bible, Book of Genesis. It was Abram's home city. No record of it in history or archaeology until discoveries in the 20th century. Dates to approximately 2600 BC. There is now a whole room in the British Museum dedicated to Ur. Most Nords of Skyrim assumed the dragons were only a legend. Until now. Legends don't burn down villages. My cousin is out fighting dragons. And what do I get? Guard duty. Thomas Jefferson's affair with Sally Hemming. Wildly considered to be a salacious libel until DNA testing showed it wasn't. Bioforce Ape. For many years, people thought the game didn't exist and that all that was left of the game was the Nintendo Power Preview. Years go by and somebody claims to have a prototype of the game and posts screenshots of the game with super weird images and text and ends up destroying it. Turns out the thing was fake, but sometime later a Japanese auction of games included Bioforce Ape and was a legit prototype with the game being even more outlandish than the fake. Monster Party's uncensored version was also thought to be a legend until it too was found on a Japanese auction as a prototype as the Japanese version was cancelled. Dexter's rude removal was thought to have been fake for a long time since it was a word of mouth episode that was shown in closed doors at conventions and the premise sounded fake to many people. It was confirmed real when Adult Swim released it on their YouTube page for a short while before removing it a while later. There's a myth in my local area about a man who was supposedly taking his dog out hunting when the dog disappeared. He finally found the dog. She had fallen into a hole. A deep hole. Upon summoning help and creating a device to retrieve her, he discovered a large underground cave system. So he did what any big entrepreneur would do. He built a device above the hole to lower the curious down and back up for a fee. This was all thought to be a legend, printed on pamphlets at the entrance of the caves. Until my family submitted photographs and documents from my great-great-grandfather to the local site where the caves were, and it was all proven to be basically true with a few minor details changed. The government watching you through your TV. Probably MK Ultra. That was some messed up stuff that people didn't believe was true until it was proven. Not that you'd want to have it be real. I did a presentation on this for school. The camel leopard was discovered to exist and was actually the giraffe. The carcadan was described as a unicorn the size of an ox, later found to be an Indian rhino. A creature of the ocean was said to have the head of a dog, four legs with claws, a fishtail, and a mane. This was later found to be a walrus. 
This, along with the other details in this thread, show that creatures that are far and wide believed to be completely fabricated could actually exist. Dragons being a combination of bones and living giant lizards, especially when lizards today can grow as large as 20 plus feet, when almost every creature on Earth has some documented story on a large ape-like monster man, it becomes difficult to believe the legends on Bigfoot are completely fake. Perhaps they are not what people think it is, but it certainly has to be something. I got three that are all sort of on similar topics. 1. Atlantis While there probably never will be a solid consensus here, some easy conclusions can be drawn from the evidences we do have. Most experts would point the finger at Santorini, which erupted in 1620 BCE, obliterating the settlement on the island and apparently ending the so-called Minoan civilization with its associated calamities. Excavations did reveal that the civilization was way ahead of its time, as in this legend, with multi-story houses and plumbing. 2. The Great Flood Fairly common knowledge nowadays, the Black Sea flooded in around 5600 BCE when a land feature that had been holding back the Mediterranean gave way. This inspired mentions in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which was later repurposed for the Bible, in exaggerated form. There have been a couple of good documentaries covering this, and showing features under the sea which clearly delineate the original coastline. 3. I saw a documentary once which discussed the verbal history of a small tribe had passed down for a long time, verbal history being the only kind we've got that predates written history of course. It concerned a mighty local river that eventually disappeared utterly. Turns out, this was most likely one of the many rivers that flowed when the glaciers of the last ice age melted. The documentary showed a nearby dried out X river that dated to the correct time of CA 10 KYA. So it was a verbal history from about twice as far back in history as when writing was invented in Egypt. You're completely wrong since Atlantis was written about by Plato and said to have disappeared thousands of years before, about 12,000 years ago. The Northwest Passage. It exists, just not where people thought it was. It's way farther north. When I was growing up, giant squids were still a myth. Now in my lifetime, they've not only found the damn thing, but an even bigger species too, called the colossal squid. Stay tuned in the next 50 years for the huge honkin' squid! That peptic ulcers can be caused by H. pylori. Barry Marshall won a Nobel Prize for proving it by using culture on himself to get infected. My parents have an old book about monsters of legend, specifically things like Bigfoot from the early 1900s. I read it once and there was a chapter about the fabled Komodo dragons. There were some other chapters in it that were proven real, but I can't remember any of the other ones. The prologue was a first-person account about an expedition that discovered the silverback gorilla, so there's that. Not a legend, really, but a medical myth. For years, people with fibromyalgia were dismissed and laughed at until someone was able to show nerve activity in sufferers that corresponded to the pain that they were reporting. Until then, people who had it were dismissed as having psychosomatic pain or worse, as drug addicts inventing reasons to get pain medications. It's important to know that when talking about myths and legends, that a lot of this stuff is not solved overnight. It's usually a longer process involving discovery, investigation, and proof. There are medical professionals who still believe that fibromyalgia is a myth or a ruse. There are other maladies, such as chronic fatigue syndrome or mental illnesses like depression, that are equally controversial in the medical world. On the one hand, it's really cool to think that there is still a lot we don't know about the human body. On the other hand, for those people who have illnesses that have not been properly defined yet, it sucks that there is still a lot that we don't know about the human body. In a sense, dinosaurs kind of were. It's speculated that dragons were actually based off of dinosaur bone findings, but of course the people at the time couldn't make a whole lot of sense of it. So in a sense, I guess you could say that dinosaurs are the real dragons. Star of Bethlehem Supposedly there was actually a supernova at the time. I'm surprised no one has said anything about Area 51. Eh, Area 51 was never a myth. It's always been known as fact since its construction that it's a very secretive military installation. The urban legends about what exactly is stored there were based on its existence and its ultra-secrecy. So to recap, Troy, Okapi, Terracotta Army, Troy, Giant Squid, Troy, Troy, Okapi, Giant Squid, Troy, Platypus, Rogue Waves, Okapi, Troy, and some other actually cool crap that I can't remember because giant Troy Squid's Okapi clit. You can't handle the truth! 
massive amounts of oral tradition from native tribes in the Americas were shrugged off and called stories by white colonists, as how could anyone but them understand the greater workings of the world? Turns out though that most of those stories were actually true, embellished a little to make them more memorable. Example. When asked how the Moy statues ended up where they did on Easter Island, the locals told the invade, I mean explorers, that they walked there. Only recently has it been discovered that there is much more under the heads than previously expected, and that to transport the heads they were likely rocked from side to side on the pivot points, letting them slowly move forward in a fashion that we would call walking them forward. Nice little documentary where they replicate this feat. Forget what it's called and I'm too lazy to bing it, let alone Google it. Lesbians. For centuries, sex between women wasn't illegal because it wasn't thought to even exist. The men in charge, or at least the lawmakers, couldn't work out how it would even be possible. Because in those days, if you didn't have a peen, you couldn't do anything, sexually or socially. And if two women lived together, they just called it good friendship. In fact, it was only a few years ago that historians admitted a woman in the 18th century, I think I can't remember her name now, was living with her partner openly. She would go out riding while wearing men's clothes, generally meaning trousers rather than ridiculously huge dresses, and ran the estate herself. The two of them lived as a couple and were sort of accepted, as much as they could be back then, by the village. Probably because she was rich and owned the local village, plus the surrounding counties. No one wants to badmouth the landlady who can have you thrown out of your home. But it was all considered a local story until they finally found a diary her partner had kept. And even then, while reading the passages about how they loved each other, they still said what close friends they are. It wasn't until they got to the pages where she talked about the two of them having sex that the historians finally admitted the truth. When Australia was first discovered, one of the first biologists to get there sent back to England the hide and verbal description of a platypus. They thought it was a hoax. There really are canals on Mars. And liquid water. And life, possibly. They ran two tests. One found markers and said yes, life on Mars exists. The other said, we're not sure, we found markers, but it could come from a non-organic source too. But thanks to them being good scientists, they say if we can't confirm it, we won't admit it. Thanks for watching until the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when our next video is available. For more videos just like this one, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and see you next time!